Hi everyone. Let's talk about image downloading in Flutter. There are three things that you need to know in order to be able to download images from a URL in Flutter. And that how do you handle errors? How do you handle the progress? And how do you actually display the image? Uh, well, it's very easy to just jump into displaying the image, but depending on the source of the image, it could take a long time for that image to be downloaded to the uh, to the telephone or to the web browser and desktop now that Flutter 2 is out. So um, depending on their on the device's bandwidth, this process could take a long time. And also things could go wrong. For instance, a user that's sitting on a train uh, going into a tunnel could start the download process of an image, but all of a sudden the tunnel basically breaks this whole communication process down. So you need to be able to handle errors as well. So in this video, we're gonna down, we're gonna create this application that you can see here. Um, I can kill this application right now in the iOS simulator and start it from scratch. And you can see that we got a little nice loading indicator, which goes super fast because I'm right now on Ethernet, a thousand thousand up, uh, down and up link. So it, it you can't really see it. And that is the reason I thought maybe to introduce you if you don't already know about this. And if you're developing on a Macintosh, to introduce you to a utility that comes with Xcode. And it is called a, link, a network link conditioner, I think. Um, and it's, it's a great utility because uh, you can go to, it, it installs it as a preference panel here in your system preferences. As you can see here in the network link conditioner, you can just tap on it. And this utility allows you to simulate specific network conditions. For instance, a 3G network, edge, uh, high latency, and then uh, you can actually configure these profiles. So as you can see, I'm, I'm at a thousand thousand uh, link right now. So if I kill this application again and then start it from scratch, it's going to go so fast again, you're not really going to see the progress bar. Maybe just for a second. But here I can enable, uh, for instance, a 3G connection and just turn it on um, and then kill the app again and start it from scratch. And now this is going to simulate a 3G network for me. So I can actually see that my uh, loading progress uh, is working as expected. You can download Network Link Conditioner is one of the um, tools that comes with Xcode from this URL developerapple.com, download more, and then you can say for Xcode in the search field. And you download additional tools for Xcode. And once you've done that, then you get this preference pane uh, as one of the utilities that you can just simply double tap on to install it in your preferences. So that's that's a really good utility if you're doing development, for instance, on your Mac and doing iOS uh, and doing like Flutter applications and testing them on iOS simulator, or even uh, on the Android emulator, you can use the network link conditioner because network link conditioner works at the OS level. It's not really re like related to your simulator or your Android emulator. It's working as at the like Mac OS level. So it is really good tool if you're doing like network uh, programming basically. Well, um, so this is what we're going to develop in this um, in this video. I've created a, um, a simple project here. Um, and I'm going to go main Dart. And what I really like is to, when I start a new project, I, I just want to get rid of all the code in here. Um, and I write STL. Um, for instance, and then I say my home or my homepage, maybe. Okay. So that's good. Um, let's go in here and just um, create a material app. Uh, I'm going to say material app. Okay. Now uh, I'm not really going to customize this. I'm just going to say the home is a home page. Okay, that's good. I'm going to put a comma here as well so that I get my good um, styling. Um, now, we got a home page here. 
I'm simply gonna uh, go and run with, without debugging and see what happens. It's gonna start building it and running it in the iPhone 12 Pro Max uh, simulator here for us. And let's see what happens. Um, in here, while while it's doing that, we're gonna also create our um, basic uh, scaffold in here, okay? I'm just gonna say scaffold. Uh, and the app bar is gonna be a new app bar with a, a title, which is a text that says, we have to go back to the other app to see what it actually said. As you can see at the moment, it's just a, like a, an empty application. I'm gonna close the widget inspector and go here and it says image download. I'm gonna write exactly that here, image download. Put my semicolon there. And then we go back to our app to see how it looks like. Here's the scaffold. Now, uh, I've already basically downloaded, uh, I've already got the link to this um, image, which is quite a big image. It's actually like a, a very, very, very large image. So I've uh, shortened it also. Um, and I've um, basically, I can provide it here for us. We're going to just say, for instance, final URL is this. And this is that image. Uh, we can open it in um, Safari. Sorry, I, I sometimes have to look at a keyboard because the microphone is blocking <laughs> the screen. Uh, and that is that image. Oh, and I can, uh, I noticed that actually I have 3G, I think, uh, enabled in network link conditioner. So I have to turn it off. Otherwise, all network and uh, operations on my Mac are going to be super slow. As you can see, this is that image. Um, it's very, very large. So it's a great candidate for our application. For now, we're going to put the URL there. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is to uh, create a, a body here. And in there, I'm just going to say image um, network from a URL. Um, go back to our application, save this, and see what happens. And as you can see, the image is rendered on top. That's great. Uh, what I also want to do is to put all this in um, a center comma. You can see the image appears there. And I would just want to give it a default padding command dot on a Mac. And I think control dot on a Windows to get this menu in Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to say uh, padding, the default padding of eight is great. So we just get some padding on the corners or on the edges. Okay. That's really good. So, um, that's, that's that. But if you look in our application here, uh, you can see that there's some shadow around this image. Um, and the reason behind that is that, um, when the image is provided and downloaded by Flutter, you get the opportunity uh, simply by hooking into some parameters from image widgets to provide your own widget that wraps your image. I find it absolutely beautifully built that they thought about this at Google and the Flutter team that they thought, okay, let's just make this completely self-contained that you don't have to play with so many different widgets. But Image is a widget that handles everything that has to do with image. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, and this parameter is called a frame builder, I think. Yes, a frame builder. I command space and I get the signature here. As you can see here, you have the possibility to return your own widget that wraps your image. In this context, the image, the downloaded image that's guaranteed according to the documentation, to the documentation not to be null, is the child. Uh, if you can see, a child is a widget, but it's actually your image. And you can just return it if you want to. And I'm going to command S and restart this whole application. Let's see what it looks like. Here. You see, it's exactly the same. But what we want to do in this application is to wrap it in kind of a container. So I'm going to go in here and say, return a container like that. The child is going to be this. Okay. Um, but let's add some decoration to it. Decoration box decoration. Okay. 
semicolon there, a box decoration with, um, let's add some shadow to it. And I think this is list. Box, box shadow is a list, right? And then we say box shadow. Blur radius of 10, maybe. And I'm going to give it a color of colors black with alpha of, let's say, 100. I think it's up to 255 or something of alpha. And then I'm going to give it an offset of offset zero, just like that. Okay. And command S, and I can already see that there's some shadow in there. If I, if I give it a higher alpha, it's actually a little, a, a lot more prominent and you can see it better. Um, in the other application, I think I was using a box shadow of, a uh, with a, sorry, the color of alpha black with alpha of hundred. So it's a little bit subtle and our application is a little bit more prominent. So let's just go back to hundred again. Um, yeah, that's that's now that. So now we got the actual frame builder working. So we're providing, uh, wrapping our image in a container and returning it from frame builder. So when the downloading is complete, then Flutter is gonna provide a, is gonna call frame builder, and we in turn are gonna return the container. Yes, so that's beautiful. The other thing that we're gonna now look at is uh, an error builder. Uh, actually, let's not look at error builder right now. Let's look at progress builder. Um, and let's let's just type builder. Loading builder is called. A loading builder is very similar to your frame builder, but it, it, it will be called and invoked as the image is being loaded. And you have the possibility to hook into this loading progress here uh, and get a uh, pro it's called loading progress right dot cumulative bytes loaded and expected total bytes so this is the amount of bytes that have been loaded and this is expected total bytes as the name suggests and i believe that this is an optional parameter so you have to kind of like say final total bytes for instance and say loading progress expect a total bytes and final and since this is an optional parameter you have to say you have to use the optional uh, optionality um, question mark there I'm gonna say final uh, bytes loaded is loading progress again uh, optional of bytes loaded is cumulating uh, cumulative bytes loaded and then I'm gonna say if total bytes is not null and bytes loaded is not null because we want to make sure that th those values are actually given to us we can't really provide a progress indicator if we don't have those values right so in here if we actually get those values then we're going to return a linear uh, let's see a linear progress indicator with a value of uh, bytes loaded divided by total bytes just like that all right that sounds really good i did a command s there um and otherwise right and otherwise we just return the child okay uh, and I'm going to restart the application now and see how, how that looks like. Now, I just saw the progress indicator very fast. Uh, and I think now is a good time to go to system preferences and network link conditioner and start it with a 3G profile and then restart the application to see how that looks like. Oh, that's great. Cool. We got the loading builder. And last but not least, we also have to provide an error indicator, um, an error builder. What an error builder does that is that um, it will give you an opportunity to display a widget to the user if the download progress, uh, if the download process doesn't go through. Uh, and uh, if you, for instance, change this URL right now to an invalid URL and just restart the application, 
you can see that 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 is what you get on the screen uh, and that's that's not really good uh, what you want to do is to go to your uh, image network and then provide an error builder here command space get the default signature and in here you can just for instance at the moment say error that's it and i'm going to restart and yeah and you can see now since the url is invalid you got an error but if i remove this last c and stir the application again like this then we get our progress indicator and then we get our image okay now that we know that the progress indicator is working as, as, as expected, I'm going to disable the network, network link condition, okay? Just like that, I'm just going to close the system preferences. Um, I'm going to start the application again, and you can see it will just go super fast and download the image. And now that we're working on handling errors for an image, I think it's really good to actually change this URL so that it's invalid. Like that, command S, or maybe let's just restart here to see that we get an error. That's great. Now, for the error, I'm just going to use a, um, let's see, let's just put a column there. Return a column, just like that. Um, the column's children, uh, let's just create uh, a text and say, could not load image, okay? And a text button. Uh, to, to allow it to give us the opportunity to re-download the image, okay? Uh, and I'm just gonna unpress is like this for now, to do to do empty for now, like that. Uh, okay, what's happening there? That should be removed. The child will be a text that says retry, for instance, okay? Good. And as you can see, they're right now up there. Uh, and if I bring this, um, if I change the, since it's a column, it means that it's a vertical component. If you change its main axis, which is the axis of Y on the screen, not X, then you're going to be able to bring all the components down. So if you just say main axis alignment, alignment center, um, sorry, main axis alignment center, like this, then you can see that information is being placed down there. That's really good. Now, you may be wondering how you should do a retry. You could simply do a set state here. Um, since our homepage right now, it is, a home, uh, it is a stateless widget. We can't do set state. We have no state. But uh, if you, for instance, had a stateful widget here, you can simply convert this to a stateful widget if you want to. Uh, but I think you get the idea. You will just simply do set state in here and then re-download the image if you if you need to. Or handle the error in some other way. Uh, you don't even have to have a retry. Maybe you want to have a button that says, oh, we're sorry, uh, go ahead to the next step. For instance, if you're doing an onboarding and then you can download an image, maybe you just want to ignore that page, depending on how important that is for you, of course. Since I can't really say how important the error handling is for you, I'm just going to leave it like this, but you get the idea. You have the possibility to do set state here if you want to, or any other operation. Well, um, that's great. That's really all we have to do. And since this URL is kind of like used once, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it from there, bring it over here. I think it's a bit cleaner in my opinion. And then we're going to remove that C from there. And let's see what's happening here. I'm going to clean the logs. And that is just like that. We got our image working with a progress indicator. And we got a box shadow with a container around the image in our frame builder. And also we have a loading builder that gives us the possibility to return a linear progress indicator as the image being downloaded. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I really do enjoy reading your comments. And uh, uh, if you have any other ideas for videos that I could do in the future, please do let me know. Have a good day.